Hey everyone, this is Nick and I'm releasing this video a day after the previous one because first I need to get back to a normal publication schedule and second because the previous one bombed hard. Hey, you can still check it out, it's a very nice video about a laptop that has super long battery life. Watch it, it's good. But to get back to the Linux and open source news, this week we have Fedora 37 Beta, which will let you try GNOME 43 in all its quick settings glory. We have new developments on GNOME Shell Mobile, which looks like one of the best alternatives for a Linux phone, and we have a new Linux malware that aims to turn your Linux devices into some crypto mining crap. And if you actually want to get infected by a stupid crypto miner, chances are with a server you'll be more targeted than with a desktop or a laptop. So why not start your own Linux server today, thanks to today's sponsor? Okay, okay, this, this segue was really bad. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is my favorite solution to run a Linux or gaming server. It's what I use to run my own Nextcloud instance and my own only office server. The interface is super easy to use, they are affordable, they have tons of documentation online and they have one-click deployable servers for a ton of applications or games, like Pi-hole. Pi-hole is a DNS sinkhole that filters out requests to ad serving domains. Basically, it lets you block ads and improve network performance. It lets you actively monitor every DNS request made on your network and block requests as they come in. And you can deploy it in one click on Linode so you can ensure I stay poor. And to get you started, Linode is giving you $100 of free credit to get your own Linux server or gaming server running. To get access to that, just click the link in the description below. So, Fedora 37 is now available as a beta release. All three versions are available, namely the workstation, the server edition, and the IoT version as well. And the usual spins are also out, like the KDE and XFCE editions. The major change to Fedora 37 is GNOME 43, with the new device security panel, the new quick settings in the shell that should make accessing Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and other system functions a lot more efficient, and some nice performance improvements, plus a bunch of apps being ported to GDK4 and Libadvita. Nautilus was also a big focus for GNOME 43, with a responsive interface, a host of improvements like a better list view, the ability to format drives, or a better properties panel. The calendar app also will get a new sidebar that's going to make it a lot better to use. GNOME software has a better menu to choose the packaging format for apps, and there's a lot more stuff coming under the hood and in the default apps. Fedora 37 also now officially supports the Raspberry Pi 4, but drops the ARM 7 architecture. And Fedora Core OS and Fedora Cloud Base will also be regular editions going forwards. And, of course, all editions will get updated libraries and programs. I probably won't make a dedicated video about Fedora 37 because most of the desktop improvements will already be covered in my GNOME 43 videos coming next week, and I will definitely try GNOME 43 on Fedora 37 beta. Intel revealed the specs to their dedicated desktop GPUs. As with the laptop GPUs and their CPUs, the range is split between Arc 3, 5 and 7, 3 being the least powerful and 7 being their high performance card. All cards will have a minimum of 6 GB of RAM and will go up to 16 GB for their limited edition Arc 770, although they say most partners will ship it with 8 GB instead. The Arc 3 cards will sport 8 XE cores and ray tracing units, while the Arc 5 will boast 24 of these, and Arc 7 will have either 24 or 32. Clock speeds range from 2000 MHz for the Arc 3 up to 2100 for Arc 7, with memory bandwidth reaching 560 GB per second for the higher-end cards. Now, the issues that seemed to plague the launch of their mobile GPUs, notably bad support for DirectX versions that aren't DirectX 12, shouldn't really be an issue on Linux, as everything will go through Vulkan thanks to DXVK, so I think these might be really good alternatives to AMD or Nvidia, at least for us Linux users. I can't wait to see what the driver support on Linux will be for these GPUs, and especially if they'll support OpenCL, which would mean I could use DaVinci Resolve without using an Nvidia GPU. That's my way out, basically. GNOME developers unveiled more details about GNOME Shell Mobile after a few months of silence. 
and the project looks like it's in a good state. It now includes all the basics, as in navigation gestures, screen size detection, the apps grid, the on-screen keyboard, and all other essential features. Gnome Shell Mobile uses the same paradigm as the desktop version, as in you have one gesture to get to everything. Swiping up from the bottom of the screen will bring your apps grid, the list of running apps, and a search field, so you don't have to use multiple complex gestures to access anything. The keyboard now behaves like what you would expect on mobile. It auto-hides when scrolling the current view, and you can dismiss it with a gesture. The apps grid is adapted for portrait orientation, with a new style for folders, and you can still reorganize apps by drag and drop. And the new GNOME 43 quick settings are also implemented here, and notifications are added to the same menu, so you just need to swipe from the top to get to all the toggles and notifications, just like on other mobile interfaces. Of course, the project is far from done, as they need to add pin unlock, emergency calls, calls on the lock screen, and more. And judging from these videos, GNOME Shell Mobile looks probably like the best mobile interface there is for a smartphone in general. So if they now can release a mobile distro that has WayDroid integrated to let me run the three or four Android apps I need, I'm switching. Still on GNOME, there are some nice updates this week. GTK 4.8 is now out, fixing bugs in GTK 3 view and adding support for more font features in the font selection dialog, on top of a few accessibility fixes, notably for the high contrast theme. The GNOME Circle project, that vets GNOME apps that respect the HIG and guidelines of the GNOME platform, is now more well defined with a checklist that allows maintainers to see if their apps can be included or not. There's also Atoms, a new application letting you access multiple distros at the same time without installing them. Think of it as bottles, but for Linux distros, and it's made by the same developer team as well. It currently supports Ubuntu, Fedora, OpenSUSE, Alma Linux, Alpine, CentOS, Debian, Gentoo, and Rocky Linux. AirTag also got a new release, letting you change the metadata for your audio files, now with support for AUG and FLAC cover art and multi-file editing. Bottles also got an update with a new library mode that I will talk about a bit later in the video in the gaming news section. I really love the pace of updates for our multiple desktops these days. It feels like things are in constant motion and it's always improving. It's a great time to be a Linux user these days. Now, I already talked about the rise of malware targeting Linux last week. And this week, we have a new one. It's called Shikitega and it can mutate its code to avoid detection. Every time it runs, it alters the code with the goal to infect Linux devices and IoT devices to gain access to them and mine crypto on the device. The base file is only 370 bytes and it can also download Metal, an exploit that gives the attacker the ability to control the webcam, run some code and generally take control of the infected system. This new malware exploits two vulnerabilities disclosed in 2021 and tries to make itself persistent by executing five shell scripts that run some cron jobs. To hide itself, it also uses cloud hosting solutions and calls to them by IP address instead of a domain name, so it's way harder to detect. So it's yet another threat to watch for. And yet another reason to apply your updates as soon as they're available, and yet another reason to have a way to check for applications distributed by their official developers and not repackaged by a third party. It's a small thing, but it would really make people feel a little bit more secure. PyTorch is now part of the Linux Foundation. If you don't know about it, it's one of the biggest machine learning projects in the world. It was developed by Meta, so Facebook, and was donated this week to the Linux Foundation. PyTorch is used for disease diagnostics, self-driving cars, image quality assessment in astronomy, and a lot more. It was already a huge project when it was hosted by Meta, with 65,000 comets in a year and 2,400 contributors. The goal for Meta in donating this project to the Linux Foundation is first to gather some goodwill with the open source community and second to accelerate its development by hosting it in a neutral home that's not associated with a giant tech company, something that can definitely prevent some people from contributing. PyTorch is hosted on GitHub currently and is licensed under the BSD license, and the Linux Foundation doesn't seem to plan to change that anytime soon. It's good to see these kinds of big projects being hosted by more neutral entities, 
And sure, the Linux Foundation is mostly paid for by these giant tech companies, but I think it still has a little bit more public trust than Facebook. NASA has decided to use the RISC-V architecture as their main ecosystem for future space missions. RISC-V is basically the open source CPU, with the instruction sets and their extensions being open and widely available, letting anyone design a CPU using that architecture. NASA has selected Sci-5, the founder and leader on that project, to give them the core CPU on their future spaceflight missions. The platform will use an 8-core CPU with up to 4 additional cores to provide computing power that's estimated to be a hundred times what current space computers can access. Being an open and collaborative architecture, what NASA ends up developing and improving will be available to others, which is always nice to see, and it should give a boost to this fascinating project. I'm super excited to see RISC-V being picked and used in massive scale real-life scenarios. I think it might be the future of computing, at least for open source and for Linux, as it basically bypasses all the licensing fee and the proprietary nature of ARM and the x86 architecture. And let's finish this video with some Linux gaming news. First, Valve is opening Steam Deck repair centers, to which your deck will be sent if it needs any work done. As long as the issue is covered by the warranty, Valve will fix it free of charge. And while you can repair it yourself, thanks to Valve's openness about the specs and the schematics, and I fix it having the parts, Sometimes you want a pro to do the repairs for you, and that's now an option. And even if the issue isn't covered by the warranty, you can still send your device to a repair center, although you'll have to pay for the repairs, obviously. Still on the Steam Deck, Valve unveiled a bunch of prototypes that didn't make the cut. Most of these have round touchpads, like the Steam controller had, and some even have a split D-pad that looks like a Switch controller. All in all, it looks like the final unit is the most ergonomic of the bunch, but there were some interesting design choices, like wide grips or more raised steam and options button, which I would have liked to see on the final unit. I told you Bottles had a new library view, so it's time to talk about it. Basically, it will list all the games and apps you installed through Bottles, in a nice grid with cover art. This solves one of the biggest issues with this app, which made you go through all your bottles to find the game or app you wanted to start. It's already available on FlatHub if you want to give it a shot. And we also have a wine release, 7.17. This time, it began work on WoW64 support in the Vulkan driver, so 32-bit programs should run better. And it fixes a bunch of issues with Earth 2150, Endless Online, Summoner, Bioshock, and other titles. I need to give Bottles another shot now that it finally has that unified library view, as it's going to be a way easier program to use to install games that aren't on any launchers, like old titles or titles you have on CD, for example. And of course, this video wouldn't be complete without today's sponsor, Tuxedo. Tuxedo makes devices that run with Linux out of the box. When you buy one, you can pick from a selection of very popular distros, or you can just buy the device and install anything you want, because you know that the hardware has been picked specifically to work with Linux. And if there are a few tweaks needed here and there, they have PPAs and repos that make sure that everything is golden. They have a nice big range of devices with every laptop size, every desktop that you might want to use, and basically they have something for every price point and every need. And all devices are highly configurable, with GPU options, CPU options, RAM, SSDs, even Blu-ray drives or your own logo on the lid of your laptop. So whether you're looking for a small NUC, a high-end gaming workstation, or a laptop of any performance range, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below and getting yourself a new tuxedo device. They're really cool. So, thanks everyone for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment, and if you didn't like it, well, you can always click that dislike button and tell me why you disliked it in the comments. That's just better for everyone. And if you really enjoy the channel and you want to help me make more of these videos, you have a PayPal link in the description, the super thanks button underneath the video, or you can become a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Both get access to a weekly podcast on Monday and the right to vote on the topics I'll cover in the next month. So thanks everyone for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!